Um, 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 Rob, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Look at me not in the top <laughs> ten here. I have to hear a question. Uh, why, why am I not in the top ten? Uh, you know what? We're going to get down to the bottom of that. Today on Hero TV. Hero brings you the incredible talents of image artist Jim Lee. Plus all the latest news and reviews on the hottest new comics hitting store shelves. Plus we'll preview Batman, the animated movie. All on Hero TV. Collect comics, then you have to have a hero. Hero Illustrated is here. A magazine exploding with previews of new comics, interviews with the best names in the business, plus exclusive updates on incredible comics like Marvel's Venom and the latest comic book news from the hottest imprints like Image, DC, Valley, Dark Horse, and the best of the rest. You'll find the latest insider info on upcoming movies, video games, and animation in every full color issue. For the store near you selling Hero and other great comics, call 800 321 Hero. Become part of the adventure. was the most explosive year in comics ever. Not only did we see Superman return in the form of four different Supermen in DC's Reign of the Superman series, but we also saw other favorites like Batman change the way they battle crime forever. And while the X-Men continued to dominate the charts with a wide variety of titles chronicling the adventures of everyone's favorite mutants, even more explosive universes were launched by several up-and-coming imprints. In addition to new launches like Dark Horse, Comics Greatest World, and Top Scurvyverse, one of these tremendous new universes is Malibu Comics Ultraverse. This fantastic new series of comics exploded into stories with an incredible combination of stories, crossing continuity, and slick artwork capturing the excitement of the Ultraverse adventure on every illustrated page. Led by Prime, the flagship title of the Ultraverse, Malibu has carefully crafted a library of comic titles that blend standard superhero adventures within a world filled with events that affect and shape the direction of every character in the book. With top-name talent ranging from Steve Gerber to Barry Windsor Smith, the Ultraverse comics are not to be missed. Dark Horse's Tales of the Jedi remains at the top of the editor's list this month. Hero turns its targets to Todd McFarlane's Spawn. From the depths of the underworld comes Spawn, the flagship for the image line. Spawn has captured the minds of millions with his brilliant artwork and fantastic story of an elite soldier who meets the devil and lives to tell the tale. Spawn is without a doubt the most incredible visual experience currently on store shelves, showcasing McFarlane's painstaking attention to detail and a dark theme that has literally changed the face of all comics and set new sights for artists to aspire to. As Spawn continues to search for a humanity that may be lost, he must face off against old adversaries like the Violator and have new encounters with established characters like Batman. Next year, the powerful artwork and gripping stories are guaranteed to keep this title in the top ten for years to come. Ay caramba! The Simpsons have arrived to Bongo Comics! 
Sparks feature Bart and Lisa's favorite cartoon team, Itchy and Scratchy. Titles include Radioactive Man and Bart Man. If you think The Simpsons are rude, crude dudes on TV, wait till you check them out in Bongo Comics. Fresh from the Dracula vs. Zorro miniseries, Topps Comic Books has an all-new Zorro series. Cover assignments will include Frank Miller of Sin City and the Dark Knight Returns fame, Mike Magnolia, artist of Top's popular Dracula movie adaptation, Jay Lee, and Adam Hughes. Zorro will face off against new foes, not third-rate banditos he fought in the past. Spielberg is developing a live-action movie based on the swashbuckling character. Plans are in the works for a Zorro animated series in 95. Introducing the Looney Tunes family of video games from Sunsoft. Family pictures. There's Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage. Now you're talking. Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> Looney Tunes. Buffer and Fuckatash. Roadrunners Death Valley Rally. Beep, beep. Tasmania. <laughs> Finally, Daffy Duck, the Marvin mission. Excellent. Move, Earthling. Kind of pushy for a guy with no mouth. You're despicable, and I'm iridescent. What do you know? Blowing the duck. That's it! The Looney Tunes family of games only from Sunsoft. <laughs> continued to command an impressive role in the ever-changing face of superhero comics. Jim Lee, with his slickly stylized renditions of fantastic superheroes and larger-than-life situations, has contributed in ways too numerous to count. His journey to stardom, however, began with his departure from Marvel and the slow but steady formation of his own studio, Homage. Uh, it really started uh, many years ago, I think in 89. Me, Scott Williams, and Will Spertasio, we all um, you know, we were working for Marvel at the time. We decided we were tired of working by ourselves in isolation and, and not having anyone to, to talk to and getting any sort of feedback on our work. And so we uh, rented a small one-bedroom apartment. Uh, it was tiny. And uh, we were all in the living room, crammed there. And um, those were really, you know, fun times. And, and quickly, you know, we hired an assistant to help out Scott Williams. And we had piled up all of these comics and we moved into a two-bedroom place. And then we moved from a two-bedroom place into a 2,000-square-foot office space. We finally took the plunge and signed a lease. And then we moved. Uh, that got too small as um, Mark Silvestri came and joined and uh, uh, Mike Heisler and, and Joe Chido. And, um, so we moved down the hallway into like 4,500 square feet. And then we hired. That's when Image really started getting rolling. We hired more personnel to help get the books out on time, or at least more smoothly. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, we brought in uh, other young artists from around the country, and then, you know, so we're actually at, at maximum capacity right here, and we're going to probably get about 12,000 square feet elsewhere now. So we're really, you know, um, it's really come a long way in a short period of time. In addition to producing some of the best comics in recent history, Lee has also created an environment for others that provides much more than his early days at Marvel ever did for him. What Homage provides, and, and this is from my own experience, having worked at a large company like Marvel and doing all my work through the mail and on the phone, is that you feel you don't really feel like you're part of the, the Marvel machine, or you know, like you know, you can read the bullpen, and you hear all the propaganda, but you don't, you know, your your contribution is so limited, really. You're providing one book out of 100 or 150. Uh, what you have here, I think, what what Extreme Studios provides, and, and what what we provide. Is, is a smaller, less bureaucratic 
sort of unit, you know. Uh, people are, uh, what we, we're trying to do is redefine what a company is, how an office should be run. You want it to run smoothly, but you don't want it to be bureaucratic. You don't want to, you know, enforce dress codes and snap the whip and all that stuff. Now, with an alternative to Marvel, a new generation of artists are being groomed at homage, learning from one of the best names in the business. We really let, you know, each artist, you know, choose their own style. Um, we give suggestions, and I'm very mindful of the fact that as I'm giving critiques for hints to, to, to young artists, I try to really, you know, explain that, that this is the way I would do it. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. I'm not saying this is the way you should do it. But the way I approach this is by doing this and this and this. And I work out there with them together. Um, you know, I try to impress upon them that I'm, I'm pulling my own weight, so I'm out there drawing pages with them and stuff and, and uh, trying to set the pace. While his strategy of bringing together the best talent in the industry is clearly paying off, Jim Lee is looking ahead. We have regular series like Wildcats, uh, Mark's doing Cyberforce, uh, uh, Scott Clark is the artist on Stormwatch. Um, we have uh, a, a backlash. Um, project that may be a mini series or a regular series that will feature Grifter, and that's the character from uh, Stormwatch. We're doing a, a new team book called Gen 13, and that's being drawn by Jeff Scott, and that's a mini series that'll come out in the first quarter of next year, 94. Um, and then there are a couple other projects being done by uh, some new uh, established guys that are coming into the studio later on this year when we move into the new office space. Uh, Travis Charest, uh, who used to work at DC, he's got a real beautiful style. I mean, it's very gorgeous, highly detailed. Um, Dwayne Turner is going to do some more work for us. Um, Richard Bennett, who was doing some work, I think, at Continuity and at Marvel. And another guy named Aaron Wiesenfeld. They're working on projects with uh, other established writers. We're sort of getting into that. You know, we're branching out and bringing in established writers that come in and, and develop uh, miniseries or series based on characters that we've uh, come up with already. While responsible for some of the best-selling titles, Lee's activities extend well beyond that of an artist. My typical day is I'll come in around 11 or noon, work in the office on an administrative level, really till about five or six, meaning okaying proofs, uh, you know, coordinating, picking out paper stock, um, dealing with licensing people, dealing with Hero Magazine, whatever. And then uh, I go home, I spend time with the family, and then I really do the drawing, what I consider to be the real work, uh, starting around probably 10 or 11 at night and working all the way till maybe 3 to 5 in the morning. While Jim Lee is overseeing the activities of dozens of other artists and providing them with an inspiration for their work, Hero asked who Lee turns to for his own inspiration. I think my first and biggest influence was like John Byrne, and it's not real apparent in the work, but, if, but I thought he was a consummate artist as far as, as having these great superhero po poses that look relaxed, yet there was a certain kind of tenseness there that made him look different from your average person. You know, uh, he, he did a, his characters moved with a certain fluidity. Uh, his backgrounds were always in, in, impeccable and, 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 you know, just mind-blowing, you know, just incredible uh, perspective shots. While the comics produced by Homage are regarded as some of the best titles ever made, Lee wants to see more comics on store shelves. Well, you know, like, I think we were shooting for four this year, and we were getting two out. Like, I looked at the schedule, we were getting a book out every two weeks. So next year, we'll probably shoot for six to eight, and we'll probably get, like, four to six out. And there's not enough hours in the day to get this all done. I mean, you walked around here a little bit with me, you can see there's a lot of activity, and, and people are constantly working on things. It's just that so much work goes into putting a comic book together that it... it, it it's amazing that, that it can be done in four weeks, really. While Homage continues to make strides at regular releases, Lee also expects 94 to be a time of rebuilding for Image as a whole. I think Image is the year that we come back. I mean, you know, like, we re regain some of the faith. You know, I, I, uh, I, I think that the kids still like our work, and, uh, but I know a lot of retailers are, are probably angry at us as a, as a whole. Um, and, and that's primarily because of our, our, our ship, shipping difficulties. And uh, at our last big meeting, we, uh, we laid down some pretty severe rules and, and punishments um, for, for being late. And when we would solicit projects, 
when we wouldn't solicit projects, how much work had to be done before we'd even say that this project existed, um, and, and penalties for, for screwing that up. So uh, next year you'll, you'll either see a lot of books come out in time or, or a lot of people leaving the image as they get fired and can. So there might be two owners or whatever, you know. Once we get that under control, we'll shorten the amount of time it takes before a book is declared returnable and things like that. And, and you know, shorter than even what the distributors have as, as guidelines. So I think it's, it's a year of mending fences, um, kind of moving into a period of, of, of uh, maturity, really. Don't move! Hero TV will be back in a moment. If you read or collect comics, then you have to have a hero. Hero Illustrated is here. A magazine exploding with previews of new comics, interviews for the best names in the business, plus exclusive updates on incredible comics like Marvel's Venom, and the latest comic book news from the hottest imprints, like Image, DC, Valley, Dark Horse, and the best of the rest. You'll find the latest insider info on upcoming movies, video games, and animation in every full-color issue. For the store near you selling Hero and other great comics, call 800-321-HERO. Become part of the adventure. Now, back to more Hero TV. Show, comic book, toys, and a movie, Batman the Animated Series has become bigger than anyone could have imagined. With the legions of fans already thrilled by Batman's big screen exploits, Hero paid a visit to the office of Warner Brothers Animation to see what was in store for the show's second season. Uh, the second season is going to be a lot of fun. It's um, going to be a bit different than the first season. Um, Fox Television, uh, where they basically were, they were very happy with our um, with our first season. They were, obviously, they were happy with the ratings, but. Um, they had uh, a few concerns about um, what they would like to see in the future for the, the second season. The growing array of friends and foes that populate Batman the Animated Series are one of the big reasons for the show's success. Supporting characters are also something we expect to see more of in the months to come. Robin, they really want to have a lot more Robin in the second season. And uh, in fact, they really wanted to have him in every single episode. And we told them it's just not possible. There's just, it's impossible to squeeze him into certain kinds of shows. It just doesn't fit. Um, but he's in about 12 out of the second 20, so there's going to be a lot of Robin shows. A typical example is like the Bane show. I know a lot of people are going to be looking forward to the Bane show because um, he's such a popular character in the comics. It kind of presented us with a problem because we can't really do Bane the way he's done in the comics. You know, we can't, first of all, we can never break Batman's back, period. Even if we wanted to, we couldn't do it because of, uh, you know, the censors. They just wouldn't allow us to do that kind of violent show. Um, and we can never call him an assassin, you know. We can, all, all these kinds of, you know, restrictions that we just can't do. So we wanted to do the character. So we thought, well, you know, he looks kind of like we were. We're just sitting around one day, just me and a bunch of the guys, and uh, we were we were looking at the the character's design in the costume in the comics, and we kind of went, you know, he looks kind of like a like a, a Mexican wrestler, you know, because he's got the boots and he's got that weird, you know, the face mask and everything, and so that kind of like gave us an inspiration on how to do the character for the series and he's, he's not that he's a Mexican wrestler per se but there's a, definitely that kind of element within the show so it's basically it's like a 20 minute fight show you know it's it's, it's not as as grim and foreboding as, as the the Bane character in the comics while the addition of new characters on the second season like baby down Jonah Hex are sure to keep the show sizzling there's one team up that Bruce Tim says won't be happening soon yeah, a lot of people have been asking if uh, if they're going to see like a Superman Batman team up on the show, and there's a, lot, a number of reasons why we're not going to do that. And first of all, is because it kind of it kind of blows our reality, the quote unquote reality that we have about the show. If you ha suddenly have this you know guy from another planet running around and having fights with Batman. Um, second of all, it just uh, it's it's a real hassle every time we do have another character from the DC Universe in the show. We have to get, uh, you know, a, a licensing agreement with, with DC Comics. They have to, you know, l l let us do it. We have to make sure it's a character that's not already previously licensed to animation or to movies or whatever. So it's a big hassle. Um, and we, we, like I said, we, we try to be eclectic. We try to, like, um, because every, everybody says, oh, yeah, you, you, you can have Superman and Batman, or you're going to have Green Arrow and Batman, you know, because they teamed up a lot in the comics. And it's like, I, I, I'd rather not. Yeah, I'd like to do, you know, more 
intriguing team-ups or more unexpected guest stars. That's why we're doing like the Jonah Hex show. And... Look for action, more guest appearances, and more Batman in the months ahead. And turn to Hero for the latest info on all the new events in Gotham. Set for the most thrilling ride of your life as Hero TV brings you face to face with some of the hottest video games ever made and gets down and dirty with new hardware and high technology. The new 3DO game machine promises to offer players new levels of excitement. The action begins with Crystal Dynamics' incredible crash and burn driver, packaged with every 3DO machine. This intense road racer and blast them up is set in the far future where teams of competitors aim their sights on the finish line and each other. Set among the ruins of a destroyed landscape, Crash and Burn is packed with all-out intensity from start to finish. Crash and Burn uses advanced 3DO technology in full motion video. The secret to winning is to never, ever make a mistake. You master that tactic and you will always destroy your opponent. Before climbing into your car, pick your driver. Once you're in the driver's seat, take out the bad guys by enhanced weapons and control. Advanced graphics, stereo sound, and full motion video make this one of the most incredible video game experiences. Also, don't miss the next exciting episode of Hero TV for news on hot hits for 94, like Super Empire Strikes Back. From the pages of Hero Illustrated comes Hero's Hot Top 10 Comics for January. Image's Freak Force number one. Dark Horse's Star Wars, Dark Empire number one. Valiant's Bloodshot number zero. Marvel's Daredevil number 158. DC's Superboy number one. Malibu's Prime number two. DC's Legends of the World's Finest. DC's Sandman, number eight. Valiant's Magnus, Nexus, number one. Marvel's Fantastic Four, number 48. For your own copy of Hero TV, send your check or money order for $14.95 plus $1.95 postage and handling to Hero TV, 1920 Highland Avenue, Lombard, Illinois, 60148. As a special offer available only through Hero TV, order now and receive a Platinum Edition Extreme Hero comic book available only through this exclusive offer. Offer good while quantities last. Be sure to join us next month when Hero travels to New York City to meet with the pros at Marvel, DC, and Defiant. Don't miss this special episode of Hero TV.
Oh, Rob Lyfer, why do you read Wizard? <laughs> Don't you hate that question at the bottom? What a self. I was reading that Joe Duffy thing today, and he goes, Why do you read Wizard? Unbelievable. <laughs>